Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark and I thought I would attempt to pick up some of the slack from Missing Sky and um, Miss Milky the Clown. I know Weeping Willow is uh, doing a great job of uh, doing reports but I typed in on Google uh, I'll show you how I got here. This is unbelievable. I typed in nuclear disaster September 12, 2004 so this popped up number two so I went here current notification report September 12 so check this out here it says this is honey I can't it's hard for me to see it through here and here I'm actually wearing two pairs of glasses because I'm super blind and I don't have my contacts in non-emergency emergency class non-emergency so this is the event number 50422 so I click here this is what it says I almost fell off my chair <clears throat> On 9-3-2014, agency, agency determined the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Through inventory reconciliation, the general licensee is missing 11, 11 model 2021 nuclear cell ionizers, each originally containing up to 10 MCIPO210. I have no idea how to say that or what the hell that means, but it doesn't sound good. Missing shit from a nuclear power plant. Agency further determined that six devices contained material that with calculated current activity well below the report level. So don't worry about it because it wasn't that high of nuclear radiation. Six of them, more than half. Three devices contained material with current activity of 0.12, and two devices contained it with current activity of 0.77. So there's two materials with 0.77 MCI. So it's 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 like uh, mm, I honestly I could not believe this. The agency did not receive specific loss source notification from the licensee no other details from the licensee at this time they're saying fuck you we're not telling you anything the devices were designed to be rugged and require no special handling procedure and were intended for use in neutralizing the static charge and environmental tests current exposure rate for each device is expected to be considerably less we're li missing 11 of them dudes what the fuck do you mean you're missing shit I'm da, 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 blown away. Another non-emergency. Let's see what this one says. 50423. Let's see what that one says. Another nine emergency. So 50422, let's review. We're missing 11. 11 missing nuclear, nuclear cell ionizers. We're missing 11 of them. We're, I mean, what business misses 11 really sensitive kinds of things? Missing motherfucker. A CO fifty seven four MCI flood source. What the fuck does that mean? I have no idea. Was reported missing. The source was first noticed missing two weeks ago. It is possible the source was shipped back to the vendor with another flood source that was mailed recently. There's no. We are current. They are currently checking with their vendor, Eckert and Sigler Isotope Products Inc., to verify their shipment. Jackson Inspection office contract contacted to perform inspection site oh here's a summary update okay the notified the initial report that the licensee had found the source thank god and it had been accidentally mailed back to their supplier well that was not so bad thank god for that so then let's keep looking down here and it's going to be of course a non-emergency ah unanalyzed condition person Deborah Seymour Brian Smith so holy mutter fire uranium fuel fabrication B&W nuclear operating group okay let's go up here and see what this one says it's a non-emergency so folks we don't have to be worried uh, <clears throat> on September 4th 2014 at approximately 1100 EDT a nuclear criticality safety NS NCS engineer identified a safety concern 
while working to consolidate information in the, in the safety basis for the safe geometry storage and transport carts, it was determined that an unanalyzed condition existed that did not meet performance requirements of 10 CFR 70.61. Tipping or impact of a cart during transport had not been considered as a credible upset condition. Evaluation of event. <coughs> At B&W NOG-L Nuclear Operation Group facilities, safe geometry storage and transport carts were used in transfer uranium bearing materials between radiologically controlled areas. The carts are typically used to transfer scrap and waste material in favorable volumes, less than or equal to 2.5 liter containing to the drum count area for 25, 235U SA. I think that's 235 uranium. Because the 235 uranium content of such containers is not known until they have been assayed, what, I'm not sure what that means, but I guess it means separated, they are referred to as unknowns and are subject to a net weight limit. These containers are limited to a maximum of 7,000 grams, net weight approximately 15 pounds of uranium, bearing weight in any form. So let's see what happened. Well, it's believed at this point the event is credible if the car were to tip. I don't understand any of this stuff. Do you guys? I have got no idea. Therefore, maintenance. It sounds like bullshit to me. I'll be honest. I don't trust these motherfuckers. Who the fuck does this, what does this mean? I honestly, like, I don't trust them as far as I could throw them. Tipping or impact of a car during transport had not been considered as a credible upset condition. He identified a safety concern. Hmm, an unanalyzed condition existed that did not meet the performance requirements. So they had uh, some type of thing happen where they didn't, they hadn't expected it. They're like, hmm, I wonder if that guy's going to get cancer. No doubt. Prairie Island, Minnesota, you poor people on the East Coast, you, I mean, for real dudes, you ought to move west. We ought to, like, invade the middle of America because really? Oof. Okay, let's see, non-emergency. I, I know I don't do as good as Miss Milky the Clown or or as Missing Sky or even Weeping Well because I dab her on, but I'm going to continue. Okay, read, Lonnie. At one zero at ten oh nine CDT on September eleventh, one R twenty two shield billing gas vent radiation monitor was removed from service for planned maintenance. This monitor has no compensatory measure that will allow timely classification of two emergency action levels, NUE notification of unusual event, and the alert classification went out of service. It is also used for off-site dose projection calculations. This results in a loss of emergency assessment capability while 1R22 is out of service. This is a reportable condition in accordance with 10 CFR 50.72. B38. So check this out. Uh, who told us this the other day in a report? That with nuclear contamination, this, when they do this gas venting, that's when most of the contamination happens. It happens once a year. And that is most of the time living around a nuclear power plant is pretty safe. But when they do this gas venting, that's when almost all the nuclear contamination happens. And it, they could vastly improve our health and our safety if they were to actually warn people when this shit went down because when they do this stuff maintenance will not result in unplanned release of radioactivity due to the environment and will not affect safe operation of the plant fuck you if it doesn't this is the bullshit it, the duration of this maintenance is scheduled for 8 hours and will continue until the monitor is serviced returned to service this is such bullshit 
Unit 1 shield building ventilation stack is also monitored by high range monitor 1R50 which is used for the same purpose in site area or general emergency classification. 1R50 is being monitored and is indicating quote normal values. There are no radioactive leaks that will impact the shield building as evidenced by normal readings on R122 prior to removal from service. The duration of this maintenance is scheduled for 8 hours and will continue until the monitor is returned to service maintenance will not result in the unplanned release of radioactivity. See, unplanned, this is the bullshit about it. They know how much is going out. And they know that more than most of the radiation, like 80%, I, who was it? For goodness sakes, I heard uh, a scientist talking, I think it was on a nuclear hot seat. Um, there was a man that she was interviewing who was talking about this. Most of the contamination happens in one day when, or twice a year when they do these releases. 5048. Okay, so let's see what's happened here. In 5048 in Virginia. What was it? Of course it's a non-emergency. Oh dear. Fitness for duty. Somebody got busted drunk driving or something like that. Did not perform the duties as a member of the ERO. It was determined that four personnel in the emergency response organization were not were not subject to random testing requirements for the fitness of duty program. The personnel involved do not have unescorted access to the protected area, but they do respond and perform duties as a member of the ERO. The affected individuals are now included in the random FFD testing pool. So, okay, so now they're putting these people... Okay, so what's going to happen is they put these persons in there. Progra programmatic failure, fitness for duty. Okay, so I'm going to read this again. On September 11, 2014, at 1400 hours, it was determined that four personnel in the emergency response organization were not subject we're not subject to random testing requirements for the fitness of duty program. Oh, so four people got out of it. Programmatic failure. Four people didn't have to do it. The personnel involved do not have unescorted access to the protected area, but they do respond and perform duties as a member of the ERO. The affected individuals are now included in the random FFD testing pool. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Any programmatic failure, degradation, discovery, vulnerability by the FFD program that may permit undetected drug or alcohol use or program ab or abuse by individuals within the protected area but by individuals who are assigned to perform duties that require them to be subject to the FFD program. So these guys got out of that. So they're tightening the belt. The noose is coming. I don't know how anybody could work for a nuclear power plant in the first place. It is not enough money. Surrey, Virginia, another non-emergency. Oh, that's the one we just did. Did we do them all? 448, was that uh, also pro programmatic, non-emergency, fitness for duty? So then that was what, the, oh, I see, they report them as two. Systematic failure. Programmatic failure. So, okay, let's go back and see if there's anything else, you guys. I'm going to let this run. Well, maybe I should end. It's at 13 minutes. I think that's long enough. You guys are probably sick of me. But, anyways... This is what the old nuclear industry is up to. Lying, murder, death, kill, insanity, agreeing to lie to everybody. So here we go. Here's a page that I go to. Asahi Shimbam, Asia and Chinese Watch. Human chain formed to mark third anniversary of anti-nuclear protest. Here, these people are fucking working it. There we go. So I'm going to stop this video and I will uh, come back and read this article or you can go to this link itself. Okay. Ciao, you guys.